So, step number five. Yes, step number five. So you came up with your topic. You're having a little bit of a hard time coming up with the rest of your paper. This is the strategy you need to use. It's called auto rehearse. That means that you meet with your editing partner, whoever that whoever that person is that you were assigned to, and you talk through your, sco your story. And if the room's really quiet, you might have to be excused to a place where you guys can have a conversation without interrupting the whole class. But this is what you need to do when you're in that situation, okay? Well, you're just going to tell the person the story. Here's our story. Once, my husband and I's spring break did not match up. My spring break was a week later. His spring break was a week before mine, obviously. So what had to happen? Well, what happened was that when I was at work, my husband heard this honking going on at the end of the road, and he was worried it was one of the kids because he was supposed to be watching the kids, and they were little at the time, and every once in a while they'd sneak away to the road, you know, and we didn't want them to get hit because we live on a busy road. So he decided, oh my goodness, why are they honking? He raced down there, uh, and he found that there was a beaver that was in the middle of the road and it was actually stopping traffic. Like you would think that people would like run it over, but they didn't want to run over this beaver. It was huge, number one. And number two, the beaver was crazy. It was trying to bite at all the tires of all the cars that were driving past the beaver, okay? Mind you, we live on top of a hill and we're about two miles from a swamp. There's no food where we live. So the beaver was clearly lost, okay? So my husband said, Hurry, Ellie, go back to the house and get me a shovel. And when you come back, bring the other two kids. So, because we have three. So, he, he, she raced back, grabbed the shovel, brought it back. And my husband thought he would take the shovel and he, like, put it underneath the beaver and just, like, tap it a little. And when he tapped it, it would run away, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, this is why the story gets so funny. It turned around and ran right up the handle. <laughs> right at my husband. My husband says, and do you know, beavers are fast. They're fast like cats. <laughs> Anyways, it chased my husband down the driveway. And, uh, oh, it was the funniest thing ever. Of course, I get home and they tell me all about this whole story. And I'm like, yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, this sounds like a really made up story. Like, I got you. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever. Well, it was probably about an hour later. And all of a sudden, our dogs are outside the door just a whining. I don't know why they're out there whining so much. So I open the door up and I look outside. And they're, being, they're literally trapped on our porch with the beavers staring at them. Making making the dogs like, let me in, let me in, let me in. So we quickly let them in. And then we were like, what are we going to do? This beaver cannot stay here. This beaver is trying to eat us. And they have big teeth. And so I call my dad. And I'm like, dad, do you have a trap for, for a beaver so we could trap this beaver? And I told him the whole story. And I'm like, um, can we come over and get the trap? And he's like, sure, you can come over and get that trap. And so I go over to his house. I get the trap. I come back and the beaver's still there. It's laying at the bottom of our house. I'm like, oh my Lord, it's going to eat one of my kids. My kids are little at this time. You know, they're like elementary school size like you. So we set the trap. We're like, well, it's not going to just like walk in the trap. So we decide we're going to put a can of tuna fish in the trap. So anyways, we put the tuna fish in there. We go to bed. We wake up in the morning. And here's where Max Landing comes. The only thing we caught was Kippy Boots, our cat. So that's an excellent ending I could put on my story that I just talked to you about. Yeah, the beaver was gone. I don't know where the beaver went to. Anyway, so now I've, what I've done is I've rehearsed my story. And I've talked through the events that have taken place in the story. So now I can start my planning. Because those are all my details. I could actually take these sticky notes or squares and write those details down. One detail on each square. And then I could organize them so that this is the stuff that took place at the beginning. Let's see. What was that called? Oh, how about the discovery of the beaver? And then when they discover the beaver, first we hear honking. Uh, my husband goes to the road, and it's trying to bite at all the tires of the cars that are driving by. Okay, so that's like the first paragraph, and it, the whole um, global reason was discovering the beaver. Okay, I think you got my point. So if you need to 
uh, rehearse your story with your editing partner, just let me know. Or maybe you need to talk through stories with your, you know, someone that's at home. And maybe they have a really fun story or adventure that you guys have had. And you need to talk about it so that you have the ideas in your head so that you're ready for your planning. Anyways, if you're having a hard time thinking of the story and thinking about planning, maybe you should listen to some other people's ideas. Because maybe they have an idea that would make you think of, oh yes, that happened to me. Mine was a little different and I can write about that. Okay? Anyways, step number five. Coming up with your ideas. Have fun.